I turned my view to the sharp and vast distance in front of me. I wondered how fast I could move now, inspired from the speed of the vessel that brought me here. I began to accelerate. Faster, faster, faster the stars went screaming by me. Faster, faster, faster things were appearing to tunnel into a small point in the space before me. Faster, 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 boom! Suddenly, everything appeared to open into an even more vast perspective. Everything looked bigger. The planets, the solar systems, and space between, and I appeared to be slowing down, though I knew that I was still accelerating. New horizons like beams of light appeared projecting onto the many areas around me as very cosmic organic arteries in the space vista's skin would open portal-like valves, and dispersed galactic substances of life that would appear and disappear at will. What kind of warp or zone had I moved into with the velocity of speed I had attained? Oddly, I was feeling very much at home here by now, and it was obvious to me that this is where everything came from, outer space. This plane of existence was so strange, so different, and so incredible but I felt very sure I had lived here before and for a very long time. I felt genuinely at home. So that narration there at the opening was from a video I just came across about a near-death experience, you know, and it's from a totally, totally new new age uh, type channel. I think it's called WeAreCreators.org, you know. So I came across this, and I don't even remember what I was looking for originally, but, but I stopped and checked it out. Um, especially in light of sort of an ongoing conversation that I've been having with someone over the past however many weeks um, who actually has experience with NDEs or near-death experiences as they're called and and has been coming into the flat earth uh, sort of awakening and understanding these things from a Christian perspective from the biblical perspective and so we were just having a conversation and she was explaining to me how 
explaining how her research has been leading her to to suspect that the NDE phenomenon is also a part of this spiritual deception, the broader spiritual deception, the great deception. So it's just an in interesting conversation that we've been having and just talking about the possible role of entheogens and that are used in things like uh, the anesthesia and things like this, and, and just how these experiences have radically increased, kind of right in step with all these other things like sleep paralysis and other things. And of course, there's a lot of them that are purported to be very Christian in nature or of God. Um, but there's a lot that are definitely not, <laughs> and this is one of them. And the amount of you know outer space connection to the whole thing is just kind of off the charts. So I was going to play a little chunk of it at the beginning. That part was from the end, where he's talking about flying through space and all that. But that was just at the end of a very long experience. and uh, So I'm going to play uh, however many mi minutes of it and then talk some more at the end. So so this is the story of some guy who had this experience. It's, it's, it's a transcendent experience, virtually indistinguishable from... You know, like a, a something that, that you hear described through the use of psychedelics or meditation or lots of other... It's it's uncanny, the resemblance here. So I'm just going to play that. And uh, and then you meet some beings. <laughs> they start teaching him how, you know, the cosmos works. And all this blatant occult teaching. So it's, it's pretty in your face. I saw Dennis. And he only had to look at me once and ran to the ridge's edge, waving his arms and hands frantically to the people below to get an ambulance. Quick. I had crashed very close to where Dennis was set up. In fact, the thermal had nearly tossed me into him and his kite. Just a few feet higher, and it would have blown me clear over the mountain. Rats, I said as I looked up to my busted kite. I broke my wings. I somewhat chuckled about it. One of my gloves fell off, and I couldn't even move to pick it up. And then my body passed out. I passed out of my body. Disincarnate. Then, there I was again, outside of my body, and didn't feel anything pulling me back this time. The transition was immediate. Everything became electric, like transforming from analog to digital and bursting with incredible intensities of light, colors, and feelings of joyous reunion. All was alive and highly conscious. It was as if I had just woken from a very long, uncomfortable dream. I felt very strong, very complete, and much more conscious than I had ever felt before. The first sound I heard was this chorus, this multitude of sounds welcoming me home. Everything in front, through, and around me was now made of energy. Every individual thing appeared to contain its own sound, colors, and tempo, and vibrated at different frequencies. All of these sounds mixed together into a symphony of song. The colors were of hues I was not familiar with. The intensity of the energies that abounded everywhere were immaculate and extremely powerful. I looked at myself to see what I was now and saw that I had retained my human form. But it too was composed of energy, sounds, colors, and tempo, and was luminous like everything else. I breathed its element and was its substance. There is a song already being sung, and we are all individual notes within this limitless ballad of the universe. I felt much more alive than I had ever felt before. I had never been this conscious of my senses and being. Oddly enough, this new essence was starting to look familiar to me. Greetings. The sky lingered as I floated above the crash scene. My mind was amazed and astounded at this new perspective of everything I could see and feel. I had never felt this good before. No fear. No pain. No underlying negative emotions. It was a glorious state of being I was now confronting. 
humbled by the pure magnificence of the sight before me, and in an ecstasy to still be alive and secure from the loving embrace this plane held me in. I felt something pulling me upwards, away from the mountain, and into the clouds, to the outskirts of our atmosphere, and into outer space. There, it stopped. I wasn't far outside of the earth, but I could see all of it. I said my goodbye, and thanked her for all she had shown me, be it good or bad, and my family, who'd helped and loved me all my life. All had been indeed a wonderful learning experience. I then turned my gaze to the deep and wondrous frontiers that lie within the body of outer space. I noticed waves of colored enlightening bands of energy were being dispersed at regular intervals from what sounded like a huge universal heartbeat. May have been the Milky Way's heart. Their source was unknown to me, and they were joyous to pass through, bringing impulses of rebirth and new age. Element 1 Distant calls of happiness spoke like old friends. This immense space, where all is suspended, has body to it, substance like that of a fluid, like a gigantic ocean carrying everything with it faster than the motion of a raging river. Never before on earth had I seen the stars and planets look like this. I found I could move on my own by merely wanting to, I found I could also move as fast as I could think. The universe is so big, it took some time to get anywhere, but soon, stars and planets were moving to and past me. I saw a planet to my left that had no glow or other characteristics the others had, so I slowed my speed to take a better look at this one. Far off behind it, I noticed a large round life form rocketing through space much faster than I had traveled and was heading directly at this void planet. With a burst of light and sound, the life force entered this planet and remained there. The planet now glowed and had its own colors, sounds, and tempo, and was greeting its surroundings. I felt its greetings touch me, and I was a long way away. What had I just witnessed? Then it came to me. Had I just seen the spiritual birth of a planet? Do planets and stars have the same correlation to each other as humans do? I could see that they also contain the two sexes, male and female. The one I had just seen its birth was male. My aura grew a little when I understood this. I felt that much stronger. Now, I wanted to see what effect this would have on how fast I could go. Faster, faster, faster I went until an orange-red planet moved right into my line of fire. Curious, I thought. I hadn't deliberately changed my course or even felt that I had tried to do so. Something else must have. I greeted it, knowing now it was a life force of a much grander scale and waited for its reply as I began decelerating in my approach to it. Welcome, it called back to me. I smiled in spirit and dove into its outer celestial body. The energies of this planet were strong and joyful, and it did have a very thin orange atmosphere that held a few beautifully strange white cloud formations. The topography of its surface was barren, but it did show signs of rivers in its past though they were presently dry etches in its soil. I felt a communication coming to me, and it was coming from the surface of this planet. I searched the grounds and saw two human life forms waving up to me. I was very surprised that I could even see them, because I was still quite high in the atmosphere. When I focused on them, a very telescopic sensation happened. I gladly descended, and the closer I came the more I could see that these two beings, male and gender, were far, far ahead and beyond me in their evolution. Wisdom and knowledge shined powerfully around each of them, and the beauty and perfection in their forms was incredible to behold. Again, I felt like an infant, but there was something about these two that looked surprisingly familiar. I wasn't sure why. I wanted to bow down at their feet on my hands and knees when I came along next to them, but they wouldn't let me. 
So I stood, hovering in front of them, and was very honored that they were communicating with me. The being on my right spoke to me first. He told me that, in one span of time, the two of us had incarnated into two of your offspring back on earth, and were once your sons. My energies started to crackle when I heard this. So this is why they looked familiar. They both smiled with my new enlightenment of who they were. I looked deeply at them. They must have been a thousand light years ahead of me. Echoes of the past rang deep within my spirit. Many had the essence of Earth to them, and surprisingly, many others previous to Earth's existence. I turned my focus back to the being on my right and was absorbed in his eyes. To incarnate or to take on the texture of any given planet is a universal process of growth for all spirits. It is indeed a challenge to do so because it's not easy to make what your spirit wants to happen, happen. The reason being is to manifest your spiritual thoughts, love, and ideas into physical matter. It is this creation process that is where spiritual growth on your part is obtained. Spirit is within a realm that moves much faster than the physical plane and is set to a much higher frequency, vibration, and is of much higher fidelity. Understand that the physical plane is composed of spirit too. All things are. But it is within a much slower spectrum. It cannot achieve the powers of higher levels on its own. It needs the help of spiritual bodies incarnating into it and raising their conscious levels together. It is a beneficial experience for both. Merging your higher plane of self, your eternal self, with this lower plane of being is totally up to you. You will experience, and have experienced with this merger, things you must overcome, because these things will get in your way as you try to ascend. Things like pain, fear, greed, grief, anger, lust, and other negative charges from past and present lifetimes are obstacles all of us must overcome to get beyond them. The more of these negative charges you conquer, the less you have to carry with you into other lives. The positive charges you create will nurture and lift you towards higher realms of strength, and manifestations become easier for you wherever you may be. The opportunities with incarnations are immense. Once your spiritual consciousness is stronger than your physical mind and brain functions, new worlds are waiting and will open for you to explore. This is true for everyone. So, okay, enough of that. You get the, you get the picture. You know, but the point of sharing something like this, I, I guess is to just try and show once again that there, when you really step back and look at the whole this construct of this vast swirling universe, this Copernican cosmology, it just, it has no purpose within a biblical framework. I mean, it just makes no sense from a Christian perspective, theologically. But from a occult spiritual perspective, it should be plain to see, you know, why they would push this whole you know cosmic backdrop this whole cosmic concept so that when people do have a transcendent experience regardless of whether it's through psychedelics or through you know magic rituals or through meditation or through through NDEs or through you know potentially right around the corner through virtual reality you know once virtual reality gets to the point where it can essentially give people that same transcendent out of body experience you know, there you go. And people can start absorbing the same things that they absorb from every other form of transcendental experience. It's the same net result, right? But space is just sort of that backdrop. I mean, can you imagine if the guy who had that experience hadn't been taught about outer space and planets and the solar system like we all were growing up and he just had this crazy experience and he, you know, you would have no context for anything. You would have no, you know, and if you took an ancient person and they had an experience like that, they would interpret that as some sort of crazy journey through all sorts of spiritual dimensions and talking to spiritual entities, which is what it is. But this is why, you know, when we start talking about the whole AI 
concept and and just again it's just another it's a, it's a narrative it, it's a narrative through which people can then interpret the same eventual experience but just through a different mode right with different labels on everything putting on your your vr goggles or or jacking into your chip or whatever and then flying through a virtual inner space and interacting with uh with entities and ethereal beings i mean it's it's just the same old you know you can repackage the same old thing on a number of different ways, but you need that sort of infinite space, whether you think of it as the cosmos or whether you think of it as the expanse of consciousness and the imagination or whatever. It's That's what pantheism and mysticism requires, is that like that infinite potential, that infinite space, that infinite creation. You know, Whereas from a biblical perspective, standpoint creation is not infinite it is finite but it's it is interesting when you think about you know i think you even mentioned in there about how it was like water at, at one point so it's not that you know this is not a hallucination in my opinion I, I do believe that this was a real experience and that they're experiencing things that are part of the nature of the spiritual realm but of course it's all being spun and man manipulated and distorted and this is why when it comes to this whole thing with quantum physics and just kind of the, the broader conversation about trying to understand the mechanics, trying to understand the nuts and bolts, trying to understand the, the metaphysics, you know, whether you're coming at it from the approach of quantum physics or from whatever else, you know, this is why I do, I take that stuff so seriously is because it's such a subtle deception to get caught up in thinking that like that we're going to you know learn the learn the the technology learn the architecture of <laughs> of the the spiritual realms you know that's nothing but a, a carrot on a stick every time and there's just no room in my mind you know from where I stand to to be messing around with that stuff to be playing around with ideas of oh yeah Jesus is a wave and we're a particle and you know, praying to Jesus as being is being quantum entangled with Jesus. I mean, this is that's just total nonsense. That it has far more in common with this kind of New Age occultism than it does with anything in the Bible. And uh, like I said, I'm not trying to just get caught up in in personal, you know, infighting and all all this stuff. But come on, I mean, there's a reason. You know, a lot of people don't understand, like, why are you talking about the New Age stuff and the hermeticism and, and all these things so often? It's because it's just constantly pushing to break through and contaminate sound biblical teaching. The true, simple, straightforward gospel of Jesus Christ does not need to be supplemented or augmented with supposedly secret teachings from Gnostic texts and extra-biblical resources. It doesn't need to be supplemented with deeper insight and understanding of from the quantum realm and quantum physics. It doesn't need to be supplemented and augmented with, with worldly so-called science about, you know, vast galaxies and Copernican astronomy. The Bible does not need it. It would talk about it if it did. But it's not, because it's not even... It's all it's all a, a construct, and so even while I realize that yeah, a lot of times it seems like these are weird rabbit holes and and topics to be exploring, but it's only because if you understand what the core teaching is of so these these hermetic ideas, these hermetic philosophies, my aim is so that people understand them enough not to become enamored with them or or fixated by them, but to have a at least a a working knowledge of these basic ideas that are straight out of the occult, of, of, of you know, these mystical ideas of pantheism, of everything being interconnected, of understanding like that there's like building blocks to the universe. These are old, old ideas that can be repackaged in so many different ways. So, but once you're able to see through just the, the change in lingo, right, and you're able to understand the false teaching itself, even if it's being put forth in a seemingly biblical context or a seemingly Christian presentation, you know, my desire is for people to, to be able to have the discernment to see through it and call it for what it is and stand firm in the truth. So...
I'm kind of rabbit trailing myself here, I, I admit, but but uh, pretty crazy stuff. I just wanted to pass this along. I'll leave a link below for the f if you want to go listen to the full thing. But maybe you do, maybe you don't. All right, peace. <laughs>